First, we have a healthy congregation. None of us are sick from the virus. Those of us who had it, well, they got well, and no one died. Jerry and Ann recently had surgery. They got through their surgery as well, and they're healing. Eileen had surgery on her hip, and she's recovered. Marius, he's healthy and active. Genevieve's medicine is giving her relief from her pain. Elvi is moving towards hip surgery. Lily Choi is in good hands as she recovers from surgery, and George is now living with their daughter. It is hard to be at home. It is hard to be separated from those who we love to see on Sunday morning. It is hard to realize that we won't see people that we love to see on Sunday mornings. We won't see them for a while because the virus is rampant and we have no idea when we will see them. But it is precisely because we stay isolated and we stay at home that our church is healthy and safe. And we're actually doing something about the economy here in our little church. We decided that we would continue to employ our, at the current level, our, our workers, Greg and Jennifer and Oscar, and, and we've benefited from that. Now, keeping, keeping three people employed didn't really make a dent in the unemployment figures. And, well, we didn't make headlines in the Wall Street Journal. But we did our part. And like I said, we benefited from that effort. We have used this time to do some painting and some repair work and, and time for Oscar to really give this building a deep cleaning. So that when we came back together, when we do come back together, this building will be safe. And it will be safe for others. Our church is empty on Sunday mornings, but the halls of our church are now alive. Starting tomorrow, Summergate, an intensive summer school program for elementary school students, will take over three of our classrooms. This program is set up to protect students from the infection and to give them much needed instruction. We're looking forward to the fall when the Children's Youth Chorus will be meeting in our church. They'll receive instruction in music in Portalhurst Hall and then go out to the uh, courtyard and get instruction on in singing. Throughout the school year, the Children's Youth Chorus will be more than just renters. We anticipate a true partnership with Covenant and we're planning on seeing them singing in our worship service. Speaking of music, well, at the end of each month, our hearts are lifted by Greg's uh, end of the month concerts here in the courtyard. Last month, we had 18 people safely spaced who heard Sunday's music recorded and then some jazz classics. Our next concert is this coming Friday at noon. Come and join us. It's safe and it's fun and we get to actually see each other. We're also taking this time to clean and paint as I, re as I remember, as I told you, but we're adding new signs to each of the interior doors. A true, a true sign that we expect you back. And in a few weeks, drive by this church, you'll notice some new outside signs inviting people to belong to Covenant Church, and some banners inviting the community to join us online. Now these banners and signs were designed by and donated by Roland Adad, who is a volunteer in the food bank and a line dancer. And he loves this church. He donated his time and his energy and his materials to make these signs. 
While you might not see or hear the line dancers upstairs, they're dancing. Each week, Dar teaches some 80 people online twice a week. Let me know if you'd like to join them, or even if you'd just like to go online and, and watch them. And while you're sitting at home watching this, while you're watching this worship service, know that many people are watching alongside you. And some of them, you don't even know. In fact, the last three weeks, we have had the most viewers of our online worship service that we've had since we began doing this in March. And we've had people coming and watching from the line dancers and from the food bank. And who would have thought six months ago that we would have figured out how we could all do, all together, how we could do communion in our own homes. We can still do much to raise awareness of racism and how it affects people in this country and in this city. We can raise awareness of the effect it has on, on individuals and people. We can help stop the spread of the virus one person at a time. But keep in mind that the Covenant family is healthy and alive and that you can remain healthy and alive within that community. But you know, sitting at home, sometimes it just feels like you're in a lonely funk. You're by yourself. How can you get out of that? How can you get out of that feeling like you'll never be connected with this family again? Because we're just never going to get together on Sunday mornings again. Well, flip back in your bulletin to the passing of the peace. Go ahead and do it. This is not just something we read. It's something we do. Read through it. It says, share the peace of Christ with each other. Today, make a phone call, write a text, or write an email to a member of Covenant Church you haven't talked to recently. Go ahead, go ahead, pick up, the, pick up your yellow directory, flip through and find somebody you haven't talked to recently and give them a call. Give them a call and say, how are you doing? Because as we read in the book of Job, your life will be brighter than the noonday. Its darkness will be like morning. And you will have confidence because there is hope. You will be protected and take your rest in safety. You will lie down and no one will make you afraid. Many will entreat your favor. So now, get out your directory and make a call. That's what I'm going to do. May the peace of Christ be with you.